In this video, I want to share with you how to create SEO silos, SEO silo structures for your website to drive more traffic to your more and most important pages. So I'm going to jump straight into it really, and I'm going to try and keep this as simple as, as possible. Um, just on our screen here, we've got an example. Let's say, for example, our main keyword that we want to rank for, or our main page that we want to rank is um, targeting the keyword dog-friendly hotel in Madrid. So that is our, our head term. That's our main top of the silo term that we want to, to rank. This is the main page that's going to bring in the most, um, most revenue for us. Um, say we've got a hotel. This is the one that's going to attract the guests that have dogs. Um, and they're going to be looking for hotels to book in um, where our hotel is situated, for example. Um, either that or we are a lead gen business and we're trying to send leads to this particular hotel. There are many ways to... to, to uh, skinny cat, as they like to say. So um, the basic premise of a silo is you've got the main term and then you've got supporting articles that is going to be building up, um, pushing authority mainly to that top page. Okay, so if we just look here at the bottom, we've got a couple of articles. These would be supporting articles. So um, these should be supplementary to our main page. So this page is just optimized around Dog Friendly Hotel in Madrid. But we've gone and used, um, people also ask, and we've gone and used, um, also asked, or, or the questions filled in Ahrefs in order to get some related terms that people are searching for if um, they're interested in dog-friendly hotels in Madrid. So is Madrid dog-friendly, for example? That's something that someone may be interested in. That could be a good term to write an article about. And then this article will link to our head term. So that will link to our top of funnel term. And then the same goes for these. Are dogs allowed in public transport in Madrid? Um, and then something that someone that's looking for a dog for your time in Madrid, something that they'd be looking for would be things like the best dog parks in Madrid, um, the best dog-friendly cafes, dog-friendly restaurants. And all of these um, are now linking to our main article. Okay, so can dogs be left in hotel rooms? That would be a question that someone would ask. That's something that you can get from people also ask just by searching for your main keyword and then just going to the drop down. If we just go and do that, actually, let's go dog friendly hotels in Madrid. And if we just go and scroll down here, we can see okay, is Madrid dog Spain dog friendly? Can dogs be left in hotel rooms? Are they allowed on buses, public transport? etc so you can go and you can click on these and go down the rabbit hole or you can use um, also asked uh, also asked.com and get a big list of of those so i think i have a one of these here that you can just see so you can see here dog friendly hotel madrid and in can dogs be left in the hotel room east spain with a dog friendly and then here are more questions that you can use so you know what to actually put into those supplementary articles as well and of course, these listicle style things, you just have a listicle of the five places that people can go to. And then what you want to do is at the top of your article, in the content itself, you want to link to your main head term. Okay, so if we go to just as an example, this is just a, a random example here in the content itself. So these terms, their main job is to link to this your head term. That is their main job. That's really their only job. They have a secondary job, which is to, they can also link to one another. So for example, is Madrid dog friendly can also then link to are dogs allowed in public transport. So that could be a segue you can have in the bottom of the article, in the middle of the article somewhere um, leading to this article. And then that can lead to um, in the five best dog parks in Madrid. So say for example, just for this example, um, public transport between dog parks. You can talk about something like that in, in the article on public transport, and that can then link to this article. And that can link to this article, and this one can link to this article. So these can link to one another. And their main job really is just to, that's just a little bit of that that um, authority juice passing, among, passing amongst itself. But the main authority is being passed to the top over here to the main article. That's why you want to have this right at the top of your article of the supplementary article. Is Madrid dog friendly? Um, and then all the rest of them as well. And this should be in the content. So when I mean at the top, it should be here basically in the first paragraph, otherwise in the second paragraph, as high um, as high in the article as possible. And this can you should only be having these two links, <clears throat> these two internal links on your site 
um, on this article. So this was our article on Is Madrid Dog Friendly? There will only be these two in-content links. So this is in-content link over here. These links here in your header, in your sidebar, in your footer, all of these, these don't really count. So these carry a lot less weight than actual content links here that are in the, in the content of the article. Um, so for these articles, their only job is to pass a bit of link flow to one another and to pass as much um, authority really as possible to the head keyword that you're trying to rank for, your main um, money keyword basically. And then what you can do is just to give these a little bit of a boost and to complete the circle really, you should take this and you should pass it back to one of your articles. Um, and then that's just going to help those articles get a little bit of authority to also rank, which in turn then pushes everything else up. So they say all, all boats rise with the sea or rise with the tide. And that's basically what that's doing. And you're just completing the circle there. But now really the, the, the confusing thing that happens where people tend to overcomplicate things is when they use extra plugins like, like Link Whisper, for example, um, de definitely a great tool, but sometimes people set automations too, too far really. So automatic links get placed or people just look for, okay, where can I add a link back to this? And then all of a sudden you've got um, another article on the side, um, for example, you may have a separate cluster is and write an article about is Barcelona dog friendly. And now you've got this article, a link whisper or one of these other tools and may, you may think, okay, well, this article makes it make sense to link to this article. But now what you're doing is you're diluting the authority of this cluster. So you want to try and keep this tight as tight as possible. So this, should not be be linking out externally to any other articles these the only job that the supportive article should have is to link to your main term the main page that's that's their main job is to link to that top term and then just to link a little bit to one another but their main job is to link to that top term even if they don't link to one another um, entirely that's also fine. For example, this bottom one, if it doesn't, if it just links to the main top term, that's fine. But um, you should not be linking with these terms outside of this cluster, because then you're just diluting that the the, the silos um, authority really. Um, you can link in, so you can link. Say for example, if you've got a category for dog friendly hotels in Spain, that can of course link into your dog friendly hotel in Madrid or if you want to link from your homepage you can link that in as well if you have an um, a blog post about the 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 most pop the most um, dog friendly places in Spain a separate article that of course can also link into these articles um, you can also have other articles that link in to to your other support supplementary articles that's fine but the main issue you want to have is these seven articles or however many supplementary articles that you're building in your silo they should not be linking out and their main job is just to have these very very strict very very um strict rules about where they are linking on your site so that's why you should have a google um a google google sheet or some other type of um form where you're actually storing this information so you know that okay this madrid article this is madrid dog friendly um, article is a supplementary article this cannot link to any new articles that we're busy making because its main job is to link to dog friendly hotels in um dog friendly hotel in madrid if our if that's our one of our main pages that we're trying to rank for um, of course if you do change your main pages, your money pages may change over time. So you may restructure things afterwards. And of course, then you can link out and you can change the way things are structured, the silos. So there's nothing really, there's nothing that's like URLs that have to be changed. You have to make these into specific categories um, or anything like that. This is a very fluid um, silo structure. And silos also, I, I classify silos a little bit differently than you would silos, um, than you would compare for for content clusters, content clusters, or or for topical maps. Um, 
those are two, three different things really. And this is a silo. And this is really the main job of a silo is to boost up one page um, and just to realize that these supportive articles are only there for that one reason. And that's pretty much it for me. If you have any questions, then please leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That's I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.